All right, guys, welcome back to Formula One News. Fred Vasseur is cooking something serious at Maranello with reports emerging that he has a shopping list of technical targets that are ready to leave Red Bull to join Ferrari in the very near future. Top of the list, though, of course, would be Mr. Adrian Newey. And if rumours are true today that Christian Horner is ready to demote Newey from the Formula One project due to budget cap constraints, surely a first class flight to Italy, maybe in the very near future. Very much interested your thoughts on all this stuff in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new, as always. I greatly appreciate it. Thanks as well for 45,000 thousand subs that we smashed through yesterday. Really do appreciate that. Well, let's crack on because Ferrari have lots of questions to answer at the moment, certainly around this Matt Oliver Behrman who had a phenomenal debut this past weekend in Saudi Arabia. Even I come out to have Haas says Behrman's the total package and there's been big rumours today as to what his future is going to be in the sport, whether it even creates headaches for Ferrari as well, given the moves they've decided to make over the next couple of years. Even Helmut Marko, who must feel relatively confident in his stability at Red Bull for now because, well, Apparently they asked him not to talk to the media the other day, but he's back on business as usual, talking about all the politics behind the scenes with other teams as well, and kind of, you know, stirring the pot, shall we say, at other teams, as he always does. At times, he was almost driving at the level of Charles Leclerc, which when you look at the numbers of Behrman on, let's say, once he got past Hulkenberg, was in free air, he was a few tenths off Leclerc's pace at the time, but as the race progressed, Behrman got closer and closer, more confidence, more confidence, for a car that he never driven before, massively impressive, of course. And as Marco says, what's Ferrari going to do now they buy the expensive Hamilton Leclerc has a longer term contract and now Behrman is a super talent if I were Fred Vasseur I would immediately find Behrman an F1 cockpit in another team now you know fair play for Marco to say this I think he's probably correct but at the same time you could also look at the fact that Ferrari don't have a, a sister team right they kind of have Haas and that's probably where Behrman will go let's be honest but they don't own a second team like Red Bull do where Arguably, Liam Lawson should have a seat now, right? Behrman's got a lot of credit, and for very good reason this past weekend. And there's also reason to believe that, in some sense, Behrman's debut has been more impressive than what Lawson did last year. But I do think both drivers are excellent. What Lawson did last year for Alfa Tauri was extremely impressive and I think it's a bit of a shock, frankly, that he hasn't got a drive this year. I think, unfortunately for Lawson, that RB sister team is effectively more of a marketing endeavour than it is an actual Formula 1 team. You can tell that by the name, and let's be honest, you can probably tell that by the fact that Dana Ricciardo actually got the seat there again because he's not been so impressive. He definitely needs to find a step, I would say, or Lawson surely is going to get a seat there in due course. This, I thought, was pretty funny, of course, throwing Fernando Alonso into this category. But even Michael Schmidt of AMUS, that have been saying a lot of things today that we'll dive into in a second, says that Ferrari already wanted to bet Behrman in a Haas this year. They thought he was that good they wanted him to have a drive now but because the Haas was terrible last year so many car issues they decided all right Ollie stay in F2 and let's see how it goes but apparently the Haas is actually right now you know it's not the worst car on the grid by some margin they're moving in a decent direction okay Haas is never going to be a great team given the resources they have and arguably it's Alpine and others that have really messed up badly this year to be behind Haas, but nonetheless, they scored a point in Jeddah. Fair play. The belief is that Hulkenberg is probably on his way to Sauber, which is going to become Audi, and then Magnussen may or may not stay, depending how he performs this season. So a seat will be available at Haas. Ferrari will probably want to put in there, especially if the Haas stay is reasonably competitive. Doesn't seem like a bad idea. Ribble, of course, themselves, however, have to figure out exactly what they're going to do with these two guys. Helmut Marco. We know that Marco he really loves uh, Sonoda and he's not really the biggest fan of Ricardo, right? Horner is the Ricardo man, generally speaking. Yuki's qualifying performance is very good and Ricardo will have to come up with something soon because he's had two underwhelming races. Yes, Ricardo did have a 40 odd second pit stop that was somehow missed by the broadcast during the Jetta Grand Prix, which is why he dropped to the back of the field. But then he did spin all of his own accord at turn one. So, you know, he's not a great start to the season. There's a few drivers that fall into the category, right? But this year, it was meant to be Ricardo is stamping his authority, let's say, on this Sonoda rivalry. So far, it's effectively been the other way around. Yes, they had their drama in Bahrain, but when Yuki needed to, you know, lay a hammer down, he just dusted Ricardo in qualifying and put a few tents on his head and, of course, finished a long way ahead of him in the Grand Prix. But it's crazy to think right now that you look at the top Formula 1 teams, Mercedes, Ferrari, and most certainly Red Bull, arguably, Ferrari are the most stable. Mercedes is still losing people to other teams, such as Jerome D'Ambrosio. The other day, he was going to Ferrari. Rumours that Andrew Shovlin, rumours that Peter Bonington, rumours that potentially others could be on their way with Hamilton to Ferrari in the near future. Red Bull is complete chaos. So in the period of 12 months, Fred Vasseur has effectively taken Ferrari from 
arguably the most shambolic of the top Formula 1 teams, to probably the most stable and the one where most people right now would arguably want to go. And there are pull factors to Ferrari and there are most certainly push factors from those other teams that we have just mentioned. And also, their car is getting better and better. They have closed the gap substantially to Red Bull from this year to last year. Now, that's not good enough to win as it stands. Red Bull are still miles ahead, let's be honest. But they've been the most competitive team outside of Red Bull over the first two races. And there is more to come. There's talks that there's a more extreme version of their SF24 in the wind tunnel right now. The direction of development is set and apparently they've got more aggressive solutions on the radiators, a brand new floor, new bodywork they're bringing as well, some updates to the side pod inlets apparently, some small changes arriving in early April, shortly after the Australian Grand Prix and then a big update come Imola. So that is the plan for Ferrari and let's be honest, ever since Fred Vassar has joined the team, it's been progress month on month and for the first time in a long time at the end of last season, Ferrari actually got better with respect to their competition towards the end of the year. They brought up grades, especially in Japan, that actually worked. Leclerc was very happy with them and the car is now much closer to where they want to be than it was previously. Yes, they messed up in 2023, but Fred Vasseur wasn't overseeing the progression of that because, of course, Mattia Bonotto was in place during the 2022 season. But there's, of course, more to come for Ferrari. And big reports emerging today that not just Fred Vasseur, but also, of course, John Elkan have been working very hard to build up Ferrari to be the team that it used to be and to potentially be the next team that's going to win a world championship. Based on everything that's happened over the last few months. I'm pretty convinced now that the next team that wins a world championship that isn't Red Bull is probably going to be Ferrari with the way that things are currently trending. So La Gazzetta, again, it's Italian media, some of this. Some of this is German media, so take it as you will. But rumours are saying that effectively they have a shopping list of guys that they want to try and get from Red Bull. There are push factors from Red Bull, absolutely. And there are pull factors from Ferrari, very clearly indeed. I think there's also been some debates because Behrman proved to be a very strong driver in Jeddah, whether Ferrari will somehow regret their decision to sign Hamilton. I don't think that's the case. I do think that it does make things interesting in terms of Hamilton having a two plus one year deal. Like let's say Hamilton joins Ferrari 25-26, is a bit underwhelming, maybe Leclerc beats him or something. Then it raises the question on what you do in 2027 if Behrman's doing really well in the Haas. But I still think it's the right move for, for Ferrari. Hamilton, I still believe in a top car, can be one of the only men on the grid that can actually challenge the Stappen. Look, that's, it's difficult to believe that anyone could realistically challenge Max right now. But Hamilton is on a very short list of guys that actually could, given the right machinery. And bringing Hamilton into the team signals intense to everybody else in the Formula 1 world what you're trying to achieve. And signals to all sorts of very talented technical people that this is a chance to come to Ferrari, the most prestigious brand, and work with Lewis Hamilton, you know, the most prestigious driver, as it stands in the sport. So I definitely don't think that they'll be having any buyer's remorse on this. Yes, Ferrari are going to pay a lot of money to get Hamilton into their team for those couple of years they'll have him, but I do think that it's going to be a good idea for Ferrari to do so. And many of these names mentioned here on screen will be more tempted to join Ferrari given this Hamilton announcement. So these are the top four names that are being linked to potentially a Ferrari move. Now, Ferrari have already made a few moves. Loic Serra from Mercedes, Jerome D'Ambrosio from Mercedes, others are on their shortlist as well. These are the names from Red Bull. So Enrico Balbo, head of aerodynamics, who was approached apparently last year in Azerbaijan, very closely related with Pierre Wache in terms of what they do for the team. Wache, of course, a good relationship with Loic Serra, who joined from Mercedes. So there's lots of reason to believe this could be plausible. They're also targeting David Morgan, Red Bull's Aero Trackside Performance Team Leader, Ben Wardhouse, the Head of Performance Engineering, and one of their top CFD guys, Alessandro Germani. So this is quite the thing for Ferrari to try and pull off. Will they get all of these targets? unlikely, but honestly, who knows? Because there are more push factors from Red Bull right now than might initially meet the eye of the drama over the last couple of weeks, and we'll dive into that now. Of course, in this article, Adrian New was not mentioned. However, in another article of the day, as we'll see in a second, he most certainly was mentioned as a prime target for Ferrari, but I think it doesn't really need to be said, does it? There might be a short list on Ferrari, but I think if there's anybody that's going to top any list of engineers that you'll want to join your team, Adrian New is going to be right there. And the reason why Red Red Bull might be hemorrhaging engineers as they are is bunch of cap reasons. If you guys saw this talking point a couple of weeks ago now, this is Rob Marshall. He has now joined McLaren, but here he is when he was at Red Bull last year on the podium last season. Now, Rob Marshall apparently only worked 10% of his hours on the Formula One project over the last couple of years. This is reported by AMUS that Red Bull especially, other teams I think as well, but the feeling is that Christian Horner 
he tends to run his teams in a way that they ride the line probably more so than any other team in terms of what is allowed and what is not allowed, shall we say. So there's been this loophole that teams, probably especially Red Bull, have been exploiting where they can take engineers and they can say, okay, hey, they only work on the Formula One project 10% of the time. They work on the powertrains 40% of the time and on the hypercar 50% of the time. So only 10% of his salary counts towards the budget cap. Now, of course, if you're the FIA, you're seeing this and thinking, okay, are we sure that Mr. Rob Marshall, who's here on the podium last year, is actually only working 10% of his time at the Formula One project? This was a big talking point of a few weeks ago that it was a way that Red Bull were getting around this. Now, Adrian Newey is also believed to be in a similar boat. He worked on the RB17 project as well. He's also like a contractor. So they've done some accounting stuff so that the amount of money they pay Adrian Newey, they can work around it so that it still kind of falls within the budget cap technically, but not for too much longer, right? Because the FIA have now said, all right, enough with this BS. If anybody works on your Formula 1 project, 100% of their salary is counted. So that's what the rule is going to be going forwards, and you can't play any of this tricker anymore. So I think it's going to affect many teams, but I think Red Bull have been doing this with a lot of employees and I think Mercedes as well I'm sure the other teams have been doing it but the feeling is that plenty of staff at Red Bull have been subject to this and therefore Red Bull aren't going to have the money to pay all of these guys for too much longer under the way the budget cap is going to work going forward there's also the understanding that the top three paid employees are excluded from the cap so I think maybe it's the drivers on top of that as well whatever it is there's some exclusions there's some ways that it's kind of been you know fiddled around in the budget cap but that is not going to last forever and now according to AMUS so this isn't you know this is Italian media that you might think of some bias in play on this Ferrari topic. This is very reliable German media here. According to rumours behind the scenes, not only Verstappen, who has clearly been frustrated with the situation behind the scenes at Red Bull, but also Adrian Newey is unhappy with the current situation. And arguably, Adrian Newey is the most important man in Formula 1. I think people have said that for some time, and it probably remains true. You can have your drivers, you can have your team bosses, you can have whatever, but if there's one man that any team on the grid would take in a heartbeat if you wanted to join them, it would for sure be Adrian Newey. It's the same for others, you know, people would take Verstappen, you know what I mean. But the car is the most important thing in Formula 1, and Agent Newey designs the best cars. Horner wants to relegate him completely to the RB17 hypercard project for budget cap reasons. So this is a really big deal. And if this is true, that Newey is getting paid too much money, that in the way the budget cap is going to work going forwards, Red Bull cannot make this work. For whatever reason, it's not going to be possible. And I don't know what's happening, but Horner, it seems to be, is breaking this team apart internally, Apparently Horner's going to stay, apparently he's going to go. We hear either thing every single day. Some reports say that he's out before Melbourne, some reports say no, he's still going to stay. Whatever the case is, it's causing internal chaos and there are push factors from Red Bull as it stands for Verstappen, but also most certainly for Newey. We know that Adrian Newey has been linked to Ferrari in the past. He has turned down an offer on multiple occasions to join Ferrari. They've been interested for whatever reason over the last several years, for various reasons, it just hasn't ended up working out. But if they go to Mr. Adrian Newey and they say, look, we are going to write you a blank check. And this is what another Italian publication is talking about today, that Ferrari is, of course, why wouldn't they, trying to get Adrian Newey. If you're Ferrari, you're seeing the chaos at Red Bull. You're seeing the fact that Hamilton's leaving Mercedes and bringing, you know, basically creating a hole at Mercedes, maybe bringing others with him as well. Those two teams are arguably in chaos, and it's not like Mercedes are performing on track either. They're kind of in shambles, to be honest, to start this season out. George Russell even said today that they still don't know why they were so far off the pace in Jeddah. And, you know, front limited circuit, we're going to Australia next, so it's not going to be great for them either there. And it seems Ferrari are ready to write another blank check. They effectively did this to Hamilton to get him to join their project and now apparently they are willing to do the same for Adrian Newey and say look Newey whatever you want you know do you want your, your kids your family to be out here like we'll, we'll house there we'll, we'll do whatever you want Newey just please 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 join Ferrari that'd be fantastic Mr. Newey we'll do whatever you want type thing and it seems like John Elkan's management and Fred Vasseur and everything they've been cooking this up for some time and the Red Bull situation makes this no doubt more likely than ever right I think Adrian Newey and the team, they seem pretty set in stone that he would stay, but... Look, I'm sure he likes working on the RB17 hypercar project, but I'm sure that Newey really wants to design Formula 1 cars. And the possibility for Newey to work for Ferrari, the possibility for Newey to work with Hamilton, and Newey has even said in the past that, you know, he is 
he wishes that he'd had the chance to work with Hamilton and Alonso. And maybe he could work with Alonso at Red Bull if Verstappen was to leave in some crazy circumstance. But he could certainly work at Hamilton at Ferrari or with Hamilton at Ferrari. And maybe that's very tempting. I wouldn't be surprised if it is, especially if Ferrari make him an offer that he cannot refuse. So it really does blow the whole doors off this situation because as long as Helmut Marko and Christian Horner and Max Verstappen remain in the team there is going to be some internal tension there. Like, it's got to resolve itself at some point. Like, I don't think there's any way that Horner, Marco, and the Verstappen camp stay as part of Red Bull and there isn't at least some degree of underlying tension, even if it's briefly calmed down for the meantime. Things are going to go crazy again. And if this is true, as of today, that budget cap-related reasons mean that Red Bull can't afford what they used to be able to afford due to various loopholes they may have been exposing over the last couple of years, then Newey can't be afforded any longer. And even we heard the other day that Horner believes he can build the team regardless. He thinks that no Newey, no Max, no Marco, no Ford doesn't matter. Horner thinks he's the man and he thinks he can, you know, keep them in position at the top of the standings. Maybe he's delusional to think that. Maybe he's justified to think that, given what he's done with this team over the last 20 years. But regardless, this is as good a time as ever for these type of moves to happen. And I think there's no denying, really, that given the start of the season for Mercedes, and of course, Hamilton individually has had his worst start to the season in 15 years on a point-scoring basis. He hasn't qualified very well so far, but he has been faster on race trim than Russell in both races so far this season. But even that has not been anywhere near enough to score any decent points because, okay, strategy was unfortunate with the safety car timing and everything in Jeddah. They were hoping for another one. That never happened, of course. But the car just isn't fast. There is no room at forwards, the amount of time they were losing in sector one. And it's clear that Hamilton, I mean, in his post-race interviews and stuff, I'm sure he's very happy with his decision to leave for Ferrari. And as far as it seems to me, Ferrari look like the place to go right now. Hamilton may have pulled a bit of a blinder here if he does join Ferrari just in time for them to really turn into a proper outfit. And the Red Bull decline is very much underway. Now, will they still win every race this season? Probably yes, based on the evidence we have seen so far. But there is no doubt that people internally are leaving, that the Red Bull dominance they have currently experienced is, this is the height of it, I would say, and it should only be down from here over the next couple of years. And if there is any team that right now looks best positioned to pick up the slack, it's got to be Ferrari. They're clearly building a project that feels more in tune and with more potential than anybody else, at least of the top teams, feels like they're in position to do at the moment, right? McLaren have made some progress for sure, but they are still a Mercedes customer. Aston Martin have even said, Fernando Alonso said that, well, you know, our cars made some progress, but we need to make another step, especially on race pace. So if you look at any of the teams over the next couple of years, you've got to think Ferrari are in the best position to do some serious damage at the top of this championship once again and really get back to where they arguably should be as still the most successful and recognizable brands in the history of the sport. But very much intrigued to your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below absolute madness again hopefully um i broke that down well enough thanks for watching take care of yourselves and i'll see you next time